Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP. This week, Don, Mike, and Carrie are out at our secondary repeater site. We've cleaned up the tower. We've got the tower safe to climb on again. We've cleaned up a lot of cables and antennas off the tower. And so now it's time to start using new antennas and some new repeaters and things at this location. This is the formerly abandoned repeater site, and it is now the occupied <laughs> repeater site. And so they're out there installing some of the newer equipment, and there's going to be more to come. So that's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, here we are, folks. Don, Mike, and Carrie were out at the secondary repeater site. And before they started pulling new uh, cables through the ingress point, uh, they wanted to make sure that they weren't going to run into any angry, buzzing creatures. <laughs> so they got out the old uh, wasp spray and made sure to uh, take care of that. We, uh, we do tend to get a few critters into our buildings. We, uh, we have them pretty well sealed up. But out here in the countryside, where both of them are, uh, after uh, a few weeks, uh, it's not unusual to find ladybugs or occasionally some wasps. Uh, or something have uh, found a, a small crack to uh, to get in from. So uh, again, uh, we cleaned up the tower and already hung some new lines and a couple new uh, antennas, one at the very top. So we need to bring the uh, the cables in. Of course, leave a drip loop there on the outside, and we're going to start putting in new hardware at this site. Uh, we've got big plans for this site. It's a good distance away from our primary site, and we want to have hopefully as many services here as we do at the primary site. And uh, so we're starting to do that. We're starting to populate uh, some new equipment and still pulling out a few bits of the old equipment. So here we're uh, working on one of the older rack systems that we have there. Um, it's good to have this kind of equipment, but you can you can set up repeaters and, and controllers and all kinds of equipment. There's all kinds of ways you can do that. Uh, we happen to have from years ago some of these old racks uh, telecom, you know, slash uh, computer IT type racks. Uh, sometimes you can get those or find those fairly cheaply, but uh, if not, you can, you can build rack, uh, all kinds of, of shelving from a big box store or anything like that. So here, uh, Mike is uh, spacing out the, um, the T-nuts uh, that you have to, uh, little clip nuts that you put in this particular style of rack. They can be a bit of a pain, but again, we've had this rack uh, it was purchased many years ago for, uh, I don't think, too much, or maybe it was even free. Um, so just getting ready to uh, to put in some of the new equipment that's going to go in. Uh, they've checked to make sure the wiring is going to be okay. And, again, when you are running repeater sites, folks, whether you're, uh, as, as we like to say here in, in Kentucky, in, in the country, if you're in town, uh, there's still going to be some kind of maintenance that needs to happen with your antennas, your cabling, and your equipment, uh, whatever kind of, uh, of shack that you're, you run or your, your club runs, uh, you know, there's still some kind of maintenance. So you may not have to have a grounds, uh, a, you know, committee grounds team to mow the grounds around your repeater and, and spray uh, weeds and, and some of the things like we do, because again, both of our locations are basically on, on the top of, of decent sized hills or, or we, we call them knobs, uh, you know, kind of, kind of small mountains. Uh, but they're, they're kind of out there and uh, trimming trees, as you've seen, that we've had to do quite a bit, uh, especially at this particular site, the secondary site, and also a little bit at the primary site, uh, just to keep them out of guy lines and away from the towers uh, and uh, also to help us to be able to install solar panels. Uh, we've got solar panels at this secondary site and we're going to be putting up solar panels on the primary site. Uh, again, our goal is to have uh, capacity so that uh, when we have power outages, we can at least run for uh, a while, uh, you know, before the power may get re restored, especially maybe in the winter time. Because these are both up on these hills, and uh, if it's winter time, things like that, uh, heavy, severe storms, uh, the roads can be a challenge. So it may be a few days. So again, we're, we're taking out some of the uh, last of the older equipment, but also putting in some of this newer. Uh, and repurposed equipment. You can see the BridgeCom uh, system we're going to be using there. We're going to be putting in uh, the newer Arcom, Arcom controller uh, that we actually built it from a kit. We uh, had a couple of videos on that. Uh, so again, we're pulling some of these older units out. 
and uh, they're going to probably sit on the shelf at least for a while. Um, they're not supported anymore. They're not uh, manufactured anymore. And so uh, although they work, uh, the, the interface, the software and stuff, it's, it's definitely showing its age. And the, uh, the Arcom is, is definitely a nice newer current, you know, build and supported type unit. So again, uh, Carrie and, and, and Mike and Don were, uh, were here this day and did a lot of good work. They got a lot of good work done as far as continuing to clean up the shack, continuing to uh, put in some of this newer equipment and, uh, and do some testing. And we, again, we have quite a bit more to go throughout uh, this year and I'm sure into next year. You know, sometimes it seems like you've got tons of time, but then you start to sort of add up the projects that you would like to do as a club. And, and we did that fairly recently. We kind of got with our members and, and our, our uh, you know, our, our president, vice president, everybody, and um, made a big list and, uh, and said, hey, you know, what do we want to do? What do we want to work on? What do we want to spend club money on? And, uh, and this is a lot of it. And, uh, you know, we have two organized work days a month, one for each repeater site, and then it's not too unusual uh, for us to have um, unplanned work days where one or more people just have some time uh, during the week or on one of the off weekends to go out and work on maybe something else or even one of these, these two main sites from time to time if it's putting uh, more gravel out or just whatever it is. So um, encourage your, your members to, to be active and, uh, and support them in being active and help them to help the club as a whole to, to work on things like this. You know, it takes hands and, and just time, time and labor uh, for a lot of these things. And uh, we have a very fortunate club. Uh, we have a, quite a few pretty active members who, who like to be involved and who like to be hands-on with these things. And, and uh, you know, like Brian, uh, KY4BDP and myself, uh, you know, we've continued to, to enjoy this and to learn new things. And so try to make sure you're sharing as much of your club knowledge as you can with as many of your members as you can so that they can uh, carry it forward and, and then again also help in these, these situations. So there you can see we took out some of the old equipment. We put in the new RCOM that we built from a kit and we got the bridge comm system there. Now, at this location, we're looking to have 2 meters, 70 centimeters. We've got GMRS. We want to get 6 meters going again. Uh, maybe 10 meters. We'll have to see about that one. So we've still got some things we want to do and to, uh, to put into this, this newer shack that we uh, you know, did videos on. Uh, so, uh, again, part of it was securing the tower and the guy lines. They needed a lot of maintenance after 20, 30 years, whatever it's been. Uh, you know, it, it, uh, not quite as much at the main location, but uh, quite a bit here. And, of course, we documented all that. We've got videos on that, all that maintenance and, and pouring in the concrete for the new guy anchors and all that stuff. So, <clears throat> again, here, again, they're, they're working with the, uh, the fresh cabling that's coming off the tower. Got rid of all the really old stuff off the tower, so it's nice and clean. Uh, and bringing it in, putting in the new equipment and uh and then there you'll see here a little bit they're going to be doing a little bit of testing so again these kinds of of work days and and wherever wherever your shack is um you know this is just stuff that needs to happen from time to time again we have two uh planned work days a month and then uh some sor sort of sporadic ones that that just when again people have some time to say hey you know i've got a day off and i'd like to come out and and uh you know you'll see us and you know, we do videos and you'll see us working on uh, Incom Junior. Uh, we did a lot of, of intermediate work. Uh, it was a big project when we did the main emergency communications trailer. Uh, and so we were continuing to finish out uh, the uh, Incom Junior, uh, which is going to be a support trailer for a lot of the things we need to use for the main emergency communications trailer. Generators and fuel and things we really would like to not have to, to have in the main trailer. So here you can see they're about to do some testing. Uh, Don is setting up a, a tuner. Uh, we're going to check the lines. You'll see him using a handy talkie here in, uh, in just a moment. Um, you know, and we spend on these work days, we usually spend, it, it's not unusual to spend at least two hours and sometimes more if the work just needs another half hour to an hour. Uh, we try to go from about 9.30 or 10 to noon uh, on these days, uh, but sometimes you just have to spend a little more time 
And again, we do these um, uh, for one for each repeater side each month. So um, again, they're just hooking the, uh, the RCOM controller into the BridgeCom. Uh, they're going to do some testing and uh, make sure things look good, make sure the SWR looks pretty decent. And uh, they had a pretty decent uh, SWR. We might uh, try to work on it a little bit more, but I think they ended up getting 1.6, about in that range. So, uh, and we're not pumping huge amounts of power through these. Again, these towers are up pretty good uh, as far as overall height above ground. And so we don't have to pump a thousand, a thousand watts. Uh, I think uh, two, two meters, uh, depending on which side it is. Uh, I don't know the primary side. I think we're, we're pushing maybe 50 watts or somewhere in there, 40, 40 to 60 watts, somewhere in there. And uh, 70 centimeters, we're actually putting out less than that. Uh, because that gets us a good amount of range. And, and the thing that, that we want to be careful of, and our club president has, has mentioned this you know, several times over the last few years, you don't want to talk further than you can hear. So you know, if we were pumping a whole lot more power, uh, we could reach further away for sure, but we probably wouldn't be able to hear very many people trying to come back to us or trying to reach the repeater. And uh, uh, some people kind of talk about that being an alligator, right? You're all mouth, <laughs> you got tiny little ears. Uh, so we purposely try not to do that. We try to make sure that basically the, as far as we can reach with the power we're using, that there, people have a reasonable opportunity to get back to us. Maybe not always with handy talkies, but you know, with a, a mobile unit or something they're using at the house with uh, either a little more power and or a little bit better antenna. Um, so we, we have good coverage with both, both of these uh, repeater sites, even though you know, we don't pump huge amounts of, of power through them. Uh, it's also relatively rural areas, and so we don't typically have to fight, uh, and most users don't have to fight a lot of interference and things, things of that nature. So here, you know, they were getting into the testing phase of this. They've got the, uh, the BridgeCom there, and they had the RCOM installed. They got them connected and, you know, use some software to program the, um, uh, both of these. Of course, you can program the BridgeCom. Uh, they're working on programming uh, the RCOM as well. Uh, and... Um, Something that, uh, that we're going to be seeing here a little bit later uh, as they finish the programming and then get into the testing phase was uh, we actually ended up with an issue. Uh, and uh, we'll kind of see this here in just a little, little bit, in another minute or two. Uh, but we ended up with an issue where the, they had a handy talkie programmed correctly with all the right information and tones. And it was coming through and it was activating the RCOM, activating... Um, uh, which was connected to and activating the BridgeCom. Uh, but something, something with the RCOM was not quite right, and we weren't activating the transmit through the BridgeCom. So the receive was fine, uh, but there's something ab about the RCOM and its, its connection uh, and interface to the BridgeCom where it wasn't passing through the push-to-talk, and so we weren't getting uh, any, any transmit. Uh, out of the uh, the bridge comm. So that's just one of the things you can run into. You know, you can set up things as best you can uh, in your in your design <laughs> location, uh, your your uh, your office, your your garage, your 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 home shack, or wherever you're you may be doing some of this work. If you have a clubhouse or whatever it is, uh, and you try to kind of set things up the way the way it's going to be in the field, and and try to get everything just right. And sometimes though. Uh, and of course, uh, I work in IT, and, and, and Mike did, and, and Brian does, and, and a lot of people do, uh, or have, and you know the best laid plans. And you tried to mimic the field scenario as best you could, and everything worked fine. And then you go to the field, and then and then something's just not right. Something's different, and because you can't always mimic the field, uh, the installation lo location, 100%. Uh, and that's what happened here. Um, everything pretty much looked good. Receive was good. Uh, for the RCOM and for the BridgeCom, but the BridgeCom wasn't getting activated correctly to transmit back out again. So uh, we're going to have to uh, to look at that and readdress that. And that's just some of the stuff you, you can run into when you're working with any kind of equipment. It could be telco equipment or, or computer equipment or, of course, ham radio equipment. And, uh, and we'll take a look at that. But we're several steps closer to where we want to be with the shack. we got some more equipment installed. we got the cabling and stuff. The, the site's cleaned up. Uh, and so just a little bit more uh, troubleshooting uh, for that unit, and then we should be good to go. And we'll be able to do 2 meters uh, and 70 centimeters with the new antenna that we put up there. 
And again, we're going to have plenty of range. We don't have to pump lots of power or, or anything like that, worry too much about losses or anything. So, uh, again, they, the guys did a really good job uh, on this work day. Uh, I wasn't able to make it. Uh, I don't think Brian was able to make it either. But uh, Mike and Carrie stepped up. And, of course, Don uh, was there to lead the, help lead the charge. And, uh, again, lots of good work got done. So, again, if your club doesn't have uh, predetermined uh, schedules for things like work days to help work on equipment, you might consider that. Try to, to maybe formalize things within your club a little bit, at least in a couple of areas, uh, to make sure things aren't getting overlooked or going too long between maintenance visits and things. Because uh, it's easy for that to happen. It's easy for folks to forget. And if it's really informal, uh, again, it's just easy to forget that. So, you know, we've, we've had to schedule as a club for a long time. And uh, depending on the weather and stuff, we may not uh, get to do nearly what we had planned to do. But we, we'd still get a few folks together and at least talk about some things, talk about what's coming up um, if the weather's too, too bad to make it to the locations. But normally we can get there. And, and again, if it's mowing the grass or spraying for weeds or working on the towers or working on the equipment, there's almost always something that needs to be done. Checking the batteries uh, at our locations and, and those kinds of things. So uh, here's where they're kind of talking about how uh, you'll see that it, it brings up that yellow light there. Uh, it brings up the corresponding yellow light, but it doesn't bring up the transmit on the, um, on the bridge comm there. So we'll, we'll get that troubleshot. So that'll wrap this one up, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. We will see you folks in the next video, 73. Thank you.